All right, guys. Um, thank you for coming to tonight's AMA with I Am Beggar. Uh, before we begin, I will lead us in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh Lord, thank you for the opportunity for us to gather here to hear Randy. I ask that you grant us the grace to make this time fruitful, and may it help us to learn and grow in our faith and spiritual lives. I ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Here is an introduction for Randy. Randy is the creator of I Am Beggar, an outreach apostolate that seeks to find new, creative, and entertaining, and hard-hitting ways to talk about God, with those who are believers or not, on the fence, searching, or just trying to figure it out, figure it all out like the rest of us. Randy, once an apathetic agnostic, lived and worked in Los Angeles for many years in the entertainment industry before rediscovering his faith which eventually led him to a seminary in Queens, New York. There, living in a community, he studied philosophy, theology, and divinity for many years. Just months before his ordination, Randy left the seminary in order to try and reach those who aren't in the church on Sunday, founding I Am Beggar. Please welcome our guest, I Am Beggar. It's very great to be here. Um, I really appreciate the invitation, and I love seeing all the uh, um, the chat and the and the icons pop up, and especially the uh, Saint Charbel one because that's that's my that's my saint. So whoever that is, props there. Um, but happy to be here, and uh, looking forward to to uh, to talking and answering some questions. Awesome. Uh, let's just jump straight in. First question is from Goofier Bell. Hello, Mr. I am Beggar. We're very glad to have you here on CDD. My serious question is, since you were working in the entertainment industry in Los Angeles when you rediscovered your faith, what thing or per person ultimately helped you or inspired you to go back to the faith? And for my fun question, do you like dark chocolate? Take care and God bless you, Mr. I am Beggar. Okay, so Los Angeles, yeah, I was working in the animation industry and actually in the video game industry, um, designing games and uh, animation, and I kind of got to a point where um, it just something was missing. And if you've seen my video about um, uh, the inevitable emptiness, that that that's kind of my my life story there. Um, and it wasn't until I think the question was about who, who or what was it. Um, it was actually a lot of things, but um, one of them was a priest that I met who just completely blew me away in, um, at Mass. And it's funny because the only reason I went to Mass is because the girl I was dating at the time uh, was Catholic and wanted to go to Mass, and I hadn't been in a long time. And I went, and this priest just blew me away. He was actually the guy who ended up was the reason why I entered the seminary. Um, so it was that, but then also going through like a pretty serious crisis of just like falling apart at the seams, like what's going on? Like I was making tons of money and doing all this stuff, but I was like miserable. And and uh, my mother got really sick and she had, she had cancer. And that was like a big, you know, wake up, like come to Jesus sort of moment. Um, and it wasn't Jesus. It was Mary who, uh, um, it's funny cause I bought my mother this book about Mary and, and then I ended up reading it myself and like long story short, Mary like literally snatched me off the cliff and, um, saved my life probably spiritually, definitely me, <laughs> who knows, maybe even physically. And, um, um, and sort of the rest is is history there, and uh, it's crazy because in you know Los Angeles working in that industry, there's not there's not a lot of love for uh, for the faith or for God or any of that stuff. Um, I remember once, just really quick, I pitched a video game concept about guardian angels, and the tagline was, "These aren't your Sunday school guardian angels," and everybody kind of looked at me like I had three heads. Um, so. Um, 
that's kind of that story. But what was uh, what was the second question? Uh, do you like dark chocolate? Oh gosh, I love it. Like with some salt to with sea salt dark chocolate. Forget about it. Like I love it. I have to agree. Dark chocolate is amazing. Next question is from AJ. Hello, glad to have you. For my serious question. I am trying to find ways to show people the faith without being too judgy, pushy, etc., and it can be difficult. What would you say is a good strategy slash way of sharing the faith to another without having to know a lot of theology beforehand? As for my fun question, what's one unordinary food that you would try? For example, pineapple on pizza. All right. Um, so for the first one, First, you can send them to the website, <laughs> um, but this is going to sound, um, you know, like cliche or or whatever. But it's it's really the truth. Um, the you know the the old saying that people claim um, Saint Francis said, but to be determined who really said it was uh, go out and preach and use words only if necessary. You know. Um, I've I've found and and I, I've uh, I'm in a lot of different circles with a lot of different people with a lot of different beliefs and with a lot of different like some just completely like you know roll their eyes at any kind of religious thing um, and I I try to get through them just by um, just just by example like just just by trying to be that person where they say. Like, okay, no, not, not Randy. No, he's not like the religious guy, but just like there's something about him that's different. And it, and it always comes, it, it starts with, with love, you know, um, like real love, like Jesus love, not like the, you know, uh, sappy love that, uh, um, like, like Jesus's love was, was strong, like serious. And, and, and then, and then also like a sense of peace where people see that, in you and when you have like when when you have that in your heart and when you have Christ in your heart it's like a giant magnet like people are just attracted to that and you don't really have to say much but they'll see like there's something different about that person you know um and then you know and then from there maybe you can start some um um get into some um conversations like uh um and what I found too is there's usually a hang up with people. And if you can find what the hang up is, and it's usually something they heard or something somebody said to them or somebody being very judgmental to them. And if you can sort of get to that and disarm that, th then I find you can have like better um, conversations. But it, it just definitely starts with being that person where people are like, like, what is it about that guy? There's something different about like he's he's peace. He's like you know something up. So um, that's what I would say. Um, and then the second question, like I'm down with with uh, um, you know um, pineapple on pizza. I'll put anything on a pizza. And um, I, I what was it? Something like what would I try? Um, I like I'm I'm kind of one of those like I'll eat anything I'll try anything and I think the the weirdest thing I ever eat, ate was um was was chicken feet and didn't like it and won't have it again. <laughs> so what you were saying about in the first question uh I think it's important to keep in mind that it's ultimately the Holy Spirit that converts people and we're just the conduits for evangelization. Men Next question is from Wizard. Good evening, sir. What did you feel like when you got the inspiration to leave seminary? How did you determine it was God's will? Um, good question. Um, God leads by peace. Um, we feel it in our spirit. We feel it in our soul. Like we're, we're made up of, um, we've got intellect and will, you know? Um, and, it's like those things both have to align. And if those are aligned, then, then we feel at peace. And for me, um, I, I didn't have that peace and the will was sort of off a little bit. And, you know, there's, there's desire and God gives us desires. And, um, 
and I didn't, I, I felt I was kind of like, well, I should do this and like, I, I should be a priest. And, um, but deep down I felt, um, and, and I knew like I, I had the know-how, I mean, I was in the seminary for over six years. Um, but there was just basically, it was just a lack of peace and that peace, just lack of peace just kind of grew. It didn't, um, it didn't diminish. And one of my mentors, even before I went into the seminary said, he's like, you, you'll know any other two ways, the peace will increase or, de or decrease. And the more I went, the more I, um, sort of lost that peace. And then, um, it was tough to leave, but, um, um, but I felt God was leading me to something else. So sort of like, like, I'm not ditching this, like I'm moving on to something else. So that, and that gave me peace. Um, so I, I, so then I was, I was confirmed in that, um, decision. I think also like Christ is the Prince of peace. So, uh, it's unlikely that any kind of peace that you're feeling, uh, could be anything but from God, especially a overwhelming peace like you described. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God, you know, God leads, leads by peace and, and, um, and, you know, there's this, there's a lot of guys in the seminary too. And there's this sort of mentality of like, well, if I just white knuckle it and get through it, like, but God, that's not the way God leads us. He leads us, uh, he leads us through peace. Next question is from Jerma. What is your favorite sweet treat? Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, you know, right down the street from me, there's this crazy, like, soft serve ice cream place, and and they like pile on the uh, sp the sprinkles, um, and <laughs> that's 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 like probably my, my favorite. And, and like, I don't eat a lot of sweets. Like, like, honestly, I don't eat a lot of sugar. Um, I'm a salt guy, but like, if I'm going to get something sweet, it's, it's the giant soft serve ice cream cones, like loaded with, with, uh, sprinkles. Sounds like a, a real guilty pleasure. <laughs> Amen. Next question is from, uh, Genesius. Hello, I'm beggar. What is your opinion on the ordinariate and the Anglican slash English patrimony in the Catholic Church? <laughs> you got me on that one. I um, do not know. I have no opinion on that. I don't even. Uh, that's that question sounds over my head. That's okay. Um, we t uh, people tend to submit questions uh, regardless of whether the uh, guest can answer them. So. If there's a question you you don't know the answer to, it's okay if we could, if we skip it. Uh, sorry to Genesius, but uh, there's your answer. <laughs> sorry, Genesius. Next question is from um, Soup. Greetings and hello, Mr. Randy, sir. In your videos, you have this really strange ability to make difficult concepts easy to understand and relatable, such as the problem of evil. In my own sharing of our faith, I struggle to do this and make the difficult questions even more difficult. What is your process and thinking that goes into making the difficult concepts relatable? That's a great question. Brevity is like the hardest thing in the world. Um, there's an old saying from Abraham Lincoln. He, he used to say, if you told me I can give like an hour speech, he's like, it's the easiest thing in the world, but tell me I gotta do a five minute speech and it's like the hardest thing in the world. Um, so what I do is I get everything down that I'm trying to say. And like for that, for that video, the one about um, problem of good and evil, like I, I probably wrote 15 pages of stuff that I wanted to get in there. And then I sort of like prioritize and okay, this is what's most important. Um, and then um, I kind of start, what's the word, but like boiling it down and sort of like, you know, how can I say this shorter? How can I say this quicker? And usually my first few takes of recording are like really long winded and like overly wordy and all this stuff. And I'm like using way too many words and adjectives and 
and and then I just as I keep recording it over and over and over again, and the idea solidifies more and more in my head. Like I can sort of whittle it down to um, just the you know just what's the essence here of what I'm trying. What's the idea I'm trying to leave in somebody's head? And and the best one of that was C.S. Lewis, and like he was able to. Um, it's funny because. I did a, um, a thing like a, a talk about C.S. Lewis on one of his, his um, just a short little paragraph that he wrote. And I was trying to like summarize it. And then I was realizing, like, I can't summarize this because he already whittled probably 50 pages of stuff down to a paragraph. So there's no way I can get it any shorter than that, you know. Um, so it just it honestly, it takes a lot of time. Um, and, um, even this video that I'm working on now, like I keep going over it and I'm like, okay, now I can say that in, you know, in rather than saying it in 50 seconds, now I can say it in 45, now I'm 42, now I'm 40. Um, so it takes time and practice, but, um, um, but, but brevity is the key. And I, I like, I appreciate the question because a lot of people bring that up. They're like, um, um, you know, they're like, it's good. Cause it's just, you know, it's, it's short, but like, I hope there's a lot in there. Um, so just, just take the time and just keep, keep whittling it down, whittling it down. Amen. All right. Uh, next question is from John the Quiet. Hello, I am Beggar. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer our questions. What is your favorite work of fiction? Uh, you know, to be honest, I haven't really read fiction in such a long time and i'm not i'm not trying to sound like um i don't know like one of those people i don't read you know like it's nothing like that i just um like i just love my um i i read mostly just you know kind of spiritual books and the saints and i love commentaries and uh, like like i could i like that's my beach reading you know um so I haven't really read any, probably the last fiction I read was probably GK Chesterton, um, some of his fiction. Um, but I honestly, I can't say like, okay, this, this is, uh, you know, this is like my favorite thing or this, this is my favorite one. I just, um, I, I'm like a total sucker for a good, like spiritual book and especially the saints. That's my favorite. It's an interesting, uh, answer uh you've mentioned c.s lewis before is lewis someone uh that you enjoy reading for fiction i have i've read most not not most but a lot of his um his you know his his fiction um but again i just go right to uh like i'm a big c.s lewis guy i've read all of his books multiple times like his 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 Christian like nonfiction books. Um, my favorite one is is uh, um, a grief observed. Um, I think anyone who's going through any sort of sort of crisis should read that book because it's it's C.S. Lewis unchained. Like it's like C.S. Lewis off the rails, like honest and and kind of like letting it just letting it fly. You know. Um, um, so yeah, I mean, I've I've read his fiction stuff too, but. Um, Honestly, I'm just like more like I'm just like all over the the other stuff. Amen. The next question is from Fian Roly, Dominus Vobiscum, good sir. I would like to ask you why you chose the Catholic Church instead of uh, other denominations. For my not so serious question, got any spooky ghost stories? <laughs> Lots of those. Um, okay. Um, well, I was I was born and raised Catholic. Um, I just sort of in my uh, you know teenage years kind of drifted away, especially um, getting into high school and in college. Um, and then um, after college, I like at call when I was at at college, I I never went to church and prayed or did anything. Um, and my dad used to call me and be like, you know, are you going to church? Have you found a church? And I would give him the old, like, 
um, yeah, dad, like I'm praying, like, I don't need to go to church to pray. And I wasn't praying and, and I'm spiritual, not religious, like all that stuff, you know? Um, and then, um, like I said, it was many years later in California that I kind of went back to my faith and, um, and to me, like the Catholic faith is just the truth. And, um, um, and it's like, I mean, we're talking about the books and the saints and, uh, the, the, the truth that goes all the way back, you know, um, and that everything is thought of and thought out over years and years and years and with the, with the Holy spirit and, um, and like, like, I love the story of St. Teresa of, I think it was, no, 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 um, Edith Stein, who was like a prodigy um a german prodigy young woman everybody wanted to work with her wanted a piece of her and she was like the top of her field in every single thing that she did and these crazy philosophies and psychologies and all this stuff she was like eh, it's like not the truth and then she picked up saint Teresa of avila's book and read it while she, when she was in like a waiting room at a doctor's office and was like that's the truth that's why I'm uh, Catholic. Amen. What was the other question? Uh, the other question was, got any spooky ghost stories? Oh, yeah. well, I got one that just happened the other day. Um, it's funny because I was just telling my brother about it. And I don't know what it was, but I was at my dad's and um, we were just watching something on TV. And like literally um, his I heard his wife come down the stairs, walk behind us, and then stand right behind us on the um, uh, at the couch. And she always did that, so I knew, you know, her footsteps and everything. And then I turn around to say hello, and there's nobody there. And I'm like, "Oh, Dad, like, where's where's Roseanne?" She just like came into the room. And he's like, "Oh, she's, nobody's here. It's just us." And like, whatever. I can't explain it. And I'm 100. It was 100 percent footsteps it wasn't like creaking boards or like heaters or anything and um and it's funny because uh my dad and and um my stepmother who lived there they've said oh they've heard stuff there all the time and so um so that that creeped me out because i actually went into the other room to look because i thought like somebody was in there and then i was like did somebody break in did we leave the door open you know um but there's nobody nobody was there that's really creepy the next question is from andy hello thanks for doing this as you know big cities are a dense and diverse mix of beliefs and ideologies has this posed any particular challenges for your evangelization uh actually it was the big cities that uh was the sort of catalyst for this whole thing um i lived in los angeles i lived in boston i lived in new york city and it was, I used to talk a lot as a seminary all throughout like Manhattan and Brooklyn and, you know, talk at churches and there'd be like 10 people in the church and it'd be like the same people who like, you know, like go to every talk at that church. And, and then I would walk out of the church and there'd be like 10 million people walking around all with like looking in their phones and th and and that's when i was like okay like that's what i want to try to do i want to try to get to people through media evangelize through media and um and it was actually in 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 big cities that uh you know um i kind of just sort of got that inspiration to like kind of tap into that you know um so yeah but it's true i mean i go to talks and i give talks and you know and in in especially i'm in new york here so in new york city and um i have in los angeles and yeah it's like a very diverse like viewpoints and and like i remember giving a talk in california once and people were you know talking about yoga over here and then crystals over there and then the universe and then all these different things and gaia and blah 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 and I, that's why I find like we were talking about the Catholic Church is in Catholic Church you can keep going back to truth, 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 or in all those other things. Once you start sort of you know 
kind of kicking the tires a little bit, they all fall apart because they're not based in, in truth, you know? Um, so, so I kind of like that. Like, I like that challenge. I like getting into those things. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you see that in the big cities. I guess people in similar situations as yours, uh, rather than like it, they would, uh, feel very annoyed by it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I kind of see it as an opportunity. Um, and, uh, cause everybody's searching, everybody's Bishop Fulton Sheen, everybody's got a giant God shaped hole in their heart. And yeah, there's some, there might be some resistance at first, but, um, but I like that. And I, it's funny, I get so many emails um, through my web, um, through my YouTube from atheists and they're like, Oh, like, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in your religion and blah, blah, blah. But like, I really like your video. And then like a conversation starts, you know? Um, and I don't know. I think like, as long as you're like, like that other question somebody asked, I think as long as we don't come across as these like, you know, preachy, like, you know, judgy people, um, and just like live with a heart of Christ, um, then I don't know. It's like you can disarm people and, and, and then, and then that's when like conversation and conversion starts happening. And you're absolutely right. That that's all the Holy spirit. But like, I, I see that those people as, as like an opportunity from the Holy spirit. Amen. Okay. Uh, next question is from El Presidente. Howdy there, partner. May I inquire about your thoughts on SpaghettiOs? Love them. I was practically raised on SpaghettiOs. <laughs> I mean, I haven't had SpaghettiOs in probably, I'm going to, I'm going to like age myself here, but 30 years. But, um, um, but yeah, SpaghettiOs, especially with the meatballs and who knows what's in those meatballs. But yeah, I was all over SpaghettiOs. Yeah. That you would get a bunch of questions. I didn't say all well thought out. Next question uh, is from Potato Infallibility. Hi there. How are you doing today? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is from Cubic. Hello, sir. I was wondering if you could explain the Trinity in a way that isn't hard to confuse, since I've noticed that some people will understand it in some way that is heretical. For my fun question, what is your favorite video editing software? <laughs> okay. For the first one, if Thomas Aquinas can't do it, then I sure as heck can't. Um, and Thomas Aquinas, like, if you read his, like, what he writes about the <laughs> Trinity and how he builds it and this and that, then at the very end he says, well, if any of this made sense, then I did something wrong. Um, so I, I think for the Trinity, we have to be comfortable in the uncomfortableness of, like, not being able to wrap our heads totally around it because and the way I look at it is I don't want to have a God that I can wrap my head around and understand this stuff. Like I want a God that I'm like, I have no idea like how or why or what, but like, yes. Okay. It's beyond, it's far beyond me. Um, but like, if I were to throw something out there, the way I think of it is, it's just in this relational way, you know, it's a relationship. Um, it's all relational. You know, God loves the Father. Uh, God the Father loves the Son, and that love is the Holy Spirit, you know. Um, so, and and that that sort of relational thing that, that just sort of like, I picture it like spinning, like, like this spinning um, around. Um, so that's the way I, like, that's, Good enough for me for that um, explanation, um, but um, like I said, it's one of those things where uh, you know I, I'm I'm okay with uh, like I said if 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 Aquinas can't explain it, and then I I certainly can't. I think um, we just need to accept the fact that the mis the the Trinity is a mystery beyond our comprehension. It cannot be explained by reason, and we just need to accept that. A Amen. And I, I, and like I said, I love that. Like, I think that's awesome that we can't explain that. Got Next it. question is from Madeline L. Hello, Mr. Randy. Thank you so much for doing an AMA with us. I am actually from New York City, so I was quite surprised to see that you used to go to seminary there. I'd like to ask what inspired you to choose to travel across the country for, for formation. 
Also, a fun related question, which is better, East or West Coast? Ah, uh, good one. Um, okay. So why did I come to New York? Um, well, my family is here. Um, and I, like I, I, I grew up in Boston and then I moved to Los Angeles and then I moved to New York. Um, so I'm sort of an East coast guy and, um, I was in Los Angeles for 13 years and, you know, my family's out here, they have kids and nieces and nephews. And like, I was just missing out. And, and, um, so I thought about entering the seminary out there, but a very close priest friend of mine said to me, never forgot it. He said, Randy, and he was Irish. He was from Ireland. He's like, Randy, you gotta, you gotta be close to blood. Like if, especially if you're going to be a priest, you gotta be close to blood because, you know, he's like, when you start off, you're going to have lots of friends and families from, from the parish and stuff like that. But the, as, as you get older and older, like they, they kind of go their ways and you move around a lot and it's just, you just want to be near blood, you know? Um, so that was my decision to enter a seminary here in New York. And I literally drove across the entire country in like four days and, uh, right into the parking lot of the seminary, um, and started. So, um, so that was that, uh, story. And what was the other question? Uh, the other question was, which is better East or West coast? Oh, well, I, I'm, I think you've I already mean, answered that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm an East coast guy and, um, they both have their, their different charms and, um, but, I'm, my roots are here, so I'm I'm like I'm 100% East Coast. Sorry to everyone in the chat who is from the West Coast. Oh yeah, and before we move on to the next question, uh, I want to circle back to uh, the fun question of Cubic that I missed. Uh, his fun question is, "What is your favorite video editing software?" Oh yeah, um, well I use um, um, After Effects, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Animate. Um, that's where I do most of the work. Um, I just edit, like I do most of the editing in there, but then just piece it together and, and just, I can, I can use anything. I can use Premiere, even, um, iMovie, you know? Um, so, uh, but Adobe Animate and After Effects are the, the big ones. Awesome. Okay. The next question is from Emily. Hello, Randy, sir. Many thanks for doing an AMA with the CDD. We are glad to have you here. My questions for you today is, what is your biggest advice for those who struggle to find a daily routine for prayer? Do you have a schedule planned or do you do more spontaneous prayer? And for a non-serious question, I am from the great dairy state of Wisconsin, so I must know what is your favorite type of cheese? I'm going to start with that one. I like smelly <laughs> cheese stinky cheeses it's funny every time i'm with my brother we're like who's got the stinkiest cheese um so um but i i'm a big cheese guy even though like i've had to cut it out lately um but uh yes yeah, stinky you know it's funny i can't I, I i can't come up with a name right now but but you know you know what i'm talking about the smelly stuff the, the smellier the better and then the first question um Sorry, just refresh refresh my memory again on that one. Someone in the live chat is asking if you like Stilton or Gorgonzola better. Oh, Stilton. Stilton. I like Stilton and Gorgonzola. Uh, and then the uh, fun question is, or sorry, the, um, the serious question is, what is your biggest advice for those who struggle to find a daily routine for prayer? Do you have a schedule planned or do you do more spontaneous prayer? Mm. I, I think the answer is in the question, um, and it's finding a schedule. Um, and my schedule now is, you know, I get up and then I, I, I have an hour for prayer just in the morning where I read. I usually start with some reading and then I get into my prayer and then I start working. And then after lunch, I always pray because after lunch is a time where you can sort of <laughs> like drift away. And, um, and there's a lot of wisdom to the liturgy of the hours of like having a certain schedule of prayer. And they did it for that reason, because it's like throughout the day, I mean, your, your mind just drifts away, you know? Um, so after lunch, 
I, I do just just a little prayer and that will be spontaneous and that'll just be like maybe I'll flip through something or the Bible and then just go from there. And then I pray every night from 10 to 11 an hour. And and that's like not including mass. I go to mass um, at noon and um, an hour every night. Um, and that's usually where I go a little, a little deeper and, you know, that's like lights off, um, kind of like the, my, I don't know, my last video, the one about prayer, that's kind of where I get that sort of style of praying. And that, a lot of that stuff came from like monks teaching and fathers of desert fathers and this, fa this great writer who wrote about contemplative prayer father dubay if you if you can find some of his books on prayer like his 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 books on um on contemplative prayer are the best um and you know saint john the cross saint Teresa of avila they're all about the contemplative uh thing so but it really like you you have to make a routine because um and even if it's for like 10 minutes here 10 minutes there um because I've found, at least for me, if if I'm like, well, I'll just pray like before I go to bed or whatever, like it just it's very easy to um, to uh, sort of let that let let that sort of slide away, you know. Um, again, think of the liturgy of the hours. I mean, that's every few hours, like you know, is is uh, like you had to be on this schedule, and it and it there's wisdom to that, you know. I have to agree with you. Um, I personally love praying the divine office throughout the day. And uh, it's very, very easy because I just have a set time where I have to pray and then the prayers are laid out for me. I don't need any creativity on my part in order to, to pray. Amen. Next question is from Garfield. What is your favorite fruit? Oh, apples. I love apples. All kinds of apples. I know that's boring, of, but I love apples. <laughs> apples is a good choice. Uh, a lot of people will be happy because we have a, a server a fruit emoji called Wapple uh, that people like to spam like they're doing now in the live chat. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, next question is from Pro. Hello, Mr. Randy. What is the most important thing for a Catholic person during the life? Oh, um most important thing well it's <laughs> that's like one of those simple yet so profound questions um the most important thing is jesus christ um and that's kind of an easy cop-out answer but like knowing loving having christ in your heart um and like that comes through prayer and worship and sacraments and all that stuff. But I think like to me, it, you know, it obviously it, it, it starts and it ends with a, a relationship with, with Jesus Christ, but like a intimate, intimate relationship um, that, that sort of like, I always think of like, I'm not married, but like, by curling up with your 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 spouse and having that like time together where you just like there's just that bond and that love and that connection like like that's how i see the int that intimate connection with christ that happens in our hearts you know um um and getting there you know is is uh you know that's where all the the other stuff like important stuff again like prayer and the sacraments and the worship and the liturgy and you know and all and all those things but it all comes down to is just um getting closer getting to know and to love christ amen pro actually put in the brackets of his question don't tell mr randy the right answer until he answers you jeremy the right answer is the eucharist which uh i think it's pretty much the same answer that you gave though in a different form amen amen i mean the eucharist is the you know is is the pinnacle the high point um and like what i described of that like curling up with your spouse like to me that's the eucharist but times a million because 
prices coming to us and giving us his entire body and life force and blood and and his being and he's giving us that in the eucharist and and we're receiving him and and giving also our hearts you know to him and um and that that's as intimate as it gets you know so yes the eucharist absolutely amen the next question is from saint maximilian stan hope you are well if i was interested in starting a discussion podcast what would be your basic recommendation for how to proceed about doing so and starting up god bless and all the best amen first of all go for it and second of all be patient um now i don't have a podcast but i you know i have my my youtube and my thing and it like i feel like i'm just starting now and it it's been like four years or something and it it just takes a long time and and especially like in the podcast world um you know there's a lot of podcasts just as there's a million youtube channels you know um and it really like people ask me that all the time like like what would you suggest like if i want to start my youtube channel and i always say patience um just keep going and you know and then also like listen to your listen to your feedback listen to what people are saying and you know um and um because <laughs> like when i started i was like well like if this if this stuff just isn't good then just tell me you know um and people are very honest and they shape it and they form it and um and um and then just be patient and then prayer like prayer it's like i'm nothing without prayer like it all every, anything i've ever done has come out of prayer like and as soon as i stop praying like that's when everything turns to to garbage literally and um and then it's just me writing stuff and saying stuff um so um so prayer and patience uh from my own personal experience uh my sister once told me that uh when she's working on something she actually is more productive when she has uh continuing her active prayer life uh compared to when she takes a break from prayer in order to focus on work amen yeah amen uh next question is from Waryanon athanasius good day mr randy why is it that when i ponder on or contemplate the gospel i always seem to be a bystander in the events and life of jesus i am no jesuit but my spirituality is based on the jesuits I also have a non-serious question. Is cereal a soup? Okay, well, if if you're doing something right, I mean, that's part of like our meditative prayer, you know, is putting ourselves in the gospel. And, you know, if 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 you can put yourselves in it put yourself in the in the gospel, um, especially um in a meditative way, you know, like Alexio Divina, which is, you know, um, I'm sure you, you know what that is. Um, and then, then you're, I, then I think you're in, you're in good shape, you know, um, um, especially if we can sort of move ourselves around in the, in the story. Uh, I always love just asking myself, yeah, like if I was there, what, what would I really be thinking? You know? Um, so, and that's like when you're when you're getting when you're getting deep. So that's all that's all good. Um, and then um, the the serial one. It's funny because somebody asked me on a podcast I was just on is 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 a hot dog a sandwich? You know, um, so is, is is cereal a soup? I'm gonna say no. I'm going with no. I think cereal cereal and soup is soup. Don't ask me to um, elaborate on that. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's a distinction that makes sense to me, at least. Uh, next question is from Polish-Swedish Union. Hello, I'm Beggar. I want to start by saying I love your animation style, its simplicity, and its precise portrayal of the thoughts you have in your head. Sometimes I struggle with hope. I look at the world, and all I see is disaster. Everything from climate change looming totalitarianism and the countless, countless lives lost to abortion, just to name a few. When I reflect upon our future, everything seems gloomy and hopeless. Is this how the apostles felt right after Christ's crucifixion? Should I just be patient? How do I find hope in such a wretched world? 
Amen. Amen. Um, man, I wish I knew the number, but there's a wonderful psalm that that just totally answers that. And I, I, I like I'm not good with mem- remembering all the numbers, but um, um, but I mean, what what you've said, I think all of us, every one of us, can relate to in some way. So first of all, you you know, we're all like searching. We we all want hope, and we're all like. Uh, what's going on in this crazy world and this and that um so i guess what i would say just just sort of off the top of my head here is first of all what i do is whatever that thing is that i want hope on and and this is this is kind of in my next video but i sort of like picture it hold it in my heart and if it's like hope on i don't know something I, i need or or like the world or whatever and I, I sort of like picture it as like an actual object of something that I'm holding on in my heart. And then, and then I just let it go. And I, and I just let it go into the heart of Christ and just like watch it sort of fade away and just trust it to him and put, put all your hope, put all, we put all of our hope in, in Christ. Um, and when we have the king of the universe, in our back, on our back, you know, um, um, in our corner, is what I'm trying to say. Um, it's like, it's, there's, there's nothing. There's, even if the world fell apart tomorrow, it's like, we still have, we still have Christ and we still have eternal life. Um, and that's, to me, that's where our hope is. And this, crazy world is, is, is just going to be crazy and it always will be. But I, I can kind of, um, what has helped me a lot because I, I was getting very cynical for a while, especially with the stuff you mentioned about the world. I guess just kept handing that over to him, handing that over to him, handing it over to him. And, and I just found over time, whatever that thread in me that was causing the cynicism, cynicism, he kind of just healed or, Grace just sort of took care of it, and it, and it just sort of went away. And then bef- before I knew it, I was like, okay, like I like I, that like I'm, I, I'm that stuff doesn't bother me as much anymore. I'm not like as cynical about it. I mean, of course it bothers me, but like I don't have that cynicism. Um, and it really helped increase my just trust in Him because it's all about you know tr- trusting that. So just I would just say, you know, just keep keep handing it over in, into his hands and just leave it there. And he just says, okay, now just leave it. Don't think about it again. Just, just leave it in, in, um, and just, just rest with me, you know? Um, um, and that's sort of kind of helped me with, uh, with a lot of those, those things that you mentioned, because yeah, if we, once we start kind of spiraling those things in our head, it's, it's, it's some, it's some nasty stuff and, and it's beyond us, but it's not beyond him. Amen. By the way, was the Psalm you, you were thinking of, uh, Psalm 22, uh, the one that Jesus, uh, referenced, uh, when he was on the cross, uh, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He, you know, that one came into my head, but that's not the one that I was thinking. Um, it's, it's one where somebody, you know, the, the psalmist is talking about um, how, he, you know, he's seeing all this stuff going on and, and around him and the craziness, and he's like losing his hope. And um, and then it just has this beautiful um, sort of ending of, of, um, of hope um, at the end of it. Um, but again, I, I, it's funny because I used to send it around to people all the time, and I just, it's just sort of escaped me since then. Well, there's 150 of them, so you're you, you don't need to blame yourself for not remembering <laughs> the number. Right, right. There's also two different systems for numbering the psalms. Right. Next question is from Cleveland fan. Hello, good sir. I seem to come across a lot of people who are indifferent to religion, and this is sometimes the hardest type to evangelize to. They believe in God or a higher power, but they don't think actual religious practice is needed or will do them any good. What's the best way to talk to such people? Yeah. Okay. That that's <laughs> that's a good one. Um, I think it starts with just the 
the basic what they call lived questions, like the questions that everybody's that we're all asking, you know, that we're all struggling with um, when it comes to things like meaning and what's the point and like, like, why are we here? Like, what's your philosophy on life? You know, like those those type of things. Um, and it's like, like, like Bishop Barron says, like, you know, when when you're when you're teaching someone about baseball, you don't start with like, you know, the infield out rule, like you, you start with just like tossing the ball around, you know, and, and usually where I, well, I, where I start with those things is kind of like, like not getting into religion or even, even, um, you know, um, any of that stuff, but just like, like what's going on, what's going on inside? Like, what, what are you, you know, like I have a friend, for example, who, is exactly as you described and he was going then he was going through some some bad stuff and i was just like well what's going on like what you know and he, he was kind of like at the end of his rope with a lot of things and and i just asked him I'm like well like do you have you ever prayed like are you a praying guy and he kind of got it defensive at first because he's like well why would you say that you like, why and then it just opened the door a little bit and then you know, but it, it started, it didn't start with, well, you got to like pray to, to God and do, it just started with, well, do you pray and like, what's going on? And then like, do you think there's a God? And, you know, and, and, um, just starting with the very basics, but one thing I found and, and like, again, I get a million emails from people in that boat. And, um, the one thing I found is like, there's no broad stroke, like, okay, try this or do that because every conversation is going to be different and every person is different and everything is going to be coming from like a different sort of point of view. So where I start with is like what we were talking about before is just trying to be a good example and then like getting kind of getting a little bit inside this person, inside their, their heart and their head about like, yeah, well then how do you feel about that? Like what's, you know, and then, and then from there you can get into like, you know, have you ever prayed about it? Like, do you believe in God? And, and then, um, if, if, you know, um, I, you know, and then I don't know, like if, if they start like getting defensive about religion and things like that, um, I, I kind of back off and then, uh, you know, and then kind of circle around again, um, at, a, at another time. Sometimes I think like if people may not be ready to talk about it yet, they know okay like this is a safe person i can talk about it who's not going to like judge me or preach or whatever and they can come back to you and and i find they usually they usually do and um and then and then they'll start asking a little deeper questions because i mean we're all searching like we're all like hurting and we're all like like again that that i love that quote we all have that god-shaped hole in our heart you know um so i my approach has always been gentle cell where I've been in the seminary and I know a lot of people who like are more the sledgehammer approach. And that works too for people because they like break right through the, you know, um, they break right through the, uh, uh, sort of ice and, and, um, shells and things like that and, and can get right down to it. But that works for you. Great. But like, I've always been a more on the, on the gentle side. Amen. I do think um, one thing that a lot of people need to do in order to evangelize is to evangelize through your friends, uh, not particularly uh, making friends for the purpose of evangelization, but making friends and then evangelizing, because that's historically how uh, Christianity spread. It's through uh, your friends, evangelizing to your friends and family. Amen. Next question is from Engineer Engineer Gaming. Hello, I'm I am beggar. What is your favorite saint? And for my non-serious question, uh, triangle angle plus triangle angle plus triangle angle equals what? No idea. Triangle. Um, no idea on that second one. The first one. Who's my favorite saint? It's usually whatever saint I'm happen to be reading at that time. Um, and I mean that 100%, like I have a lot of favorites and like I mentioned before, I love St. Charbel. 
love Padre Pio. Padre Pio is like a it's like a special thing bond with with him. Um, I love Saint uh, Saint Therese. Oh yeah, just wh- whoever whoever I just happen to be reading at that time is usually my favorite saint. What did I just read? Uh, I forgot who I was just reading about, but, um, but my top three are Charbel, Padre Pio, and, uh, I don't know, St. John the Cross, St. Teresa of Avila. Those two are like, they're like a pair. So I'll, 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 I'll say those four and, uh, obviously Mary, but I, I consider Mary like at a different, you know, um, sort of plane, but, um, but yeah, that's what I'd say. And then the other question I, I have no idea the answer to that. <laughs> I think the answer is uh, 180. Okay. Um, as for your answer to the first question, we always get that question. And um, whenever we get it, I say that uh, the only correct answer is Our Lady. And the only thing you get to choose is which title of Our Lady uh, is your favorite. But yeah, yeah, you're right that she's in her in a category of her own. Yeah, and and you're absolutely right. And like she's you know the queen of the saints, queen of the angels. Like so, yes, she she's to me like in a very special place, all all on her own. And then and then and then the rest of the saints, you know. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. Next question is from NZ Gamer. Hello, I am Beggar. Your channel has been such a help to me in recent times. I thank you for helping people like me become closer to God. And I just wanted to ask you how could I share the gospel with people such as my best friends being a young teenager. I sometimes have the feeling of anxiety and worry when I think of the future of my friend's soul, as I love them a lot and have fears of what could happen if they die before they hear the gospel. So how do you think I could talk to them about Jesus if they are a bit dismissive and uncaring? Normally, we don't talk about serious topics, and, do, and I don't want to be judgy or aggressive about evangelization to them, but I really want them to be saved. For my fun question, what is your favorite video game? And if you don't like video games, what is your favorite piece of entertainment? Anyways, I appreciate you and your channel, and I hope that you have a, good, have a God-blessed day. Amen. Well, God bless. Um whoever wrote that and you know for for just having that concern and that love for the the soul of your friend you know um so a, a couple things just popped into my head is first like it it starts it, it's all about love you know um so we, we're always approaching it from a, a standpoint of love and loving with the heart that Christ through through Christ's love that hopefully is is within us, you know. So it starts with loving of that soul, and it sounds like you love that soul because you're concerned about it. Now, when we're, we start getting like fear of of um, you know losing that person's soul, well, that that we 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 in, entrust to to God and the Holy Spirit, and then we just you know we we love the soul. We have to do our part, obviously, but a couple of things I always say is, first of all, there's, you know, there's time. So it's like, you don't have to force it right away. And I, because I, I think of myself when I was probably the age of the person you're talking about, if anyone came near me about like, even my dad or my friends or whoever came near me about God, like. I would either laugh at them or like roll my eyes or like, I just didn't want to hear it. But certain people were patient with me and stuck with me. Those were the people who had the most instrumental effect on my faith were the ones that, okay, they laid off, but I knew, you know, I still knew where they were coming from. And then like, as I look back now, it's like, oh my gosh, like those, like if it wasn't for them, like I would have never had my like reconversion or whatever, whatever you want to call it. But it was them and those prayers that were like super instrumental to my, and they just kind of walked with me and stuck with me and, and then like, um, and were patient. And then like 
God always presents an opportunity and, um, and you'll know when, when that opportunity, because it's like, you'll feel the Holy spirit. And, and so I would just say like, like, don't watch out for the fear because, you know, um, um, we're just going to put that in, in, uh, hand the fear over to God and just focus on just loving that soul, walking with them, even if it's going to take time. And obviously you, you stick by your guns, you know, and then God always presents an opportunity. Like I, like I was talking about my friend, I was praying about that for a long time and sort of like on and off with him. And then all of a sudden he was going through this tough thing. And then we got into this really deep conversation about prayer, you know? Um, so, so be patient. I mean, if, if, if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody because believe me, I was way off the rails and the charts, especially when I moved out to Los Angeles, but it was those people. It's like, I think of St. Monica and it's funny because I lived in Santa Monica, but like St. Monica who just was, you know, always there throughout the whole thing in that, as that instrument. And, and those are the people who, who were there for me that, that when I look back, I'm like, if it wasn't for them, you know, I, I wouldn't have come back to the church. So, so just stick, stick with it. Amen. Next question. Uh, was there yeah. another question in that? Like a fun one? I forgot. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is your favorite video game? And if you don't like video games, what is your favorite piece of entertainment? <laughs> well, I worked in video game, the video game industry for many years, but this was back in like the Wii days. Um, but like, um, I would say my uh, my favorite game was and probably still is, is two games, Mario Kart and... Oh man, what was that game? Uh gosh. It was like this Sony game. It was like a um uh not not the Colossus, it was the one before that. This was like PlayStation, I don't know, two or three. Um not Shadow of Colossus is like before that, but um I think somebody's saying it on the uh Ego. Ico, yes, Ico, that's it. Um yeah, that sounds right. That was my favorite game. But the I'm dating myself here, so I haven't played I haven't played games in a while since then. Next question is from Kerbeus. Hello, I am Beggar. What is your favorite slash dream car? Dream car? Or favorite car? It's my car. GTI. I love it. It's my second GTI. When I moved to California, I bought a I bought a GTI. Uh, uh, it's a Volkswagen Golf GTI. When I first moved to California, I got a GTI for five hundred bucks. And it was like my favorite car. And then I went through and, and it just died. And then I went through all these like, you know, Accords and Camrys and Fords and whatever. And then I actually got another GTI recently and I just, I absolutely love it. So that's my dream car. Next question is from Pancho Peanut. Hello, Mr. I am Beggar. How should we approach rebuking non-believing friends when they sin? For my second question, what are your thoughts on pineapple on pizza? I'm okay with pineapple on pizza. I'm good with anything on pizza. Uh, I almost opened a pizza restaurant once, and my whole thing was going to be like all these crazy kinds of pizza, but I'm glad I, I didn't do that. Um, and then regarding uh, rebuking friends, um, I the word rebuke kind of makes me a little uncomfortable. Um, and what I do is people know where I stand. Like, so my friends, they know where I stand and they know like if, if it's my business and they're like, um, and I'm involved somehow and I, I, I don't, you know, I find something that they're doing is, um, is, is sinful or I'm not. And I, I'll let them know and I'll, I'll do it gently. And, um, and I just tell them why, like, um, and very gently, I don't like, I, I, I don't argue. I just say, well, this is, you know, this is how I feel about that. And, and this is why, and, and usually it makes sense to them. And then, I mean, because heck, like I was the biggest sinner and still am, but like, you know, I was the biggest, like, <laughs> you know, um, so so that my my approach is usually, you know, again, if 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 I'm involved in this situation and um 
I'll just say, oh, well, like, this is kind of like how I feel about that. And, and this is why. And I, I do it very, very gently. And, and then the more you do that, the more people know where you stand. And then I find people like either hi hiding from me or sometimes even, which is cool, is they're trying to then now, oh, well, like, like they're trying to show some sort of virtue or some sort of like, oh, like, you know, like, I don't, I'm not doing that anymore or, or some something. Um, but again, I, you know, as I said, I've always, I've always taken the gentle approach. I mean, I've had friends and I have a priest friend who'll like, like literally rebuke people and be like, that is a sin and this and that. And, you know, I, I, I've, I've just found, I, um, I take the, uh, the, the, like I love the the word like meek, and it comes from um, the word meek that's translated in the Bible. There's this one word that it. There's a few different words that it comes from, but one of the words that it comes from means gentle as a feather, but strong as iron. And that's kind of the approach that I love to take. Is is um, is yeah, gentle like a feather, but but strong as iron. Amen. Next question is from Alice. Hello, Mr. I am Beggar. What is your favorite prayer and why? And for the fun question, what is your favorite memory as a child? My favorite prayer, um, and I get asked this a lot. Um, I have a confession to make. I am, um, I was never really too big on like reciting prayers and Lord forgive me. <laughs> and the reason why is because my brain is like racing. So like, it's always racing. So like, you know, you give me set prayers and like, I'll blah, 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 like right through it. And then I'm like on, um, you know, my, my mind is not there. My heart's not there. So my favorite prayer is the pr a prayer of the heart, you know, 100%. Like if it's not coming from your heart and it's doesn't really mean much, you know, um, and, and all the, every, every single like, re, like prayer that we recite, it's, it's meant to bring us deeper into our hearts and deeper into that union and deeper into that connection and deeper to Christ. Like that's, that's the, it's supposed to lift us to him into his heart, you know? Um, and so for me, just because of my, you know, just out of control mind, like I, I, I need to like be just completely focused on, okay, like what is my heart trying to say to God right now? You know, now I pray the rosary and, you know, the divine mercy chaplet and, and all that, but I'm, I'm like, even sometimes, even during the rosary, I find myself, okay, like I'm just going through the, the, you know, thing here. It's not until I really slow it down and really meditate on the mystery and really get inside that it's like, okay, okay, now I'm praying the rosary, you know? Um, okay. Now with all that said, I hope I didn't like scandalize everyone, but like my favorite prayer is the hail Holy queen, just because I'm all about Mary and I'm a Mary guy and, and maybe, and probably the memorare, you know, those are probably my two, if I had to pick two, those are my two favorite. And those to me, like I can say with my heart, without my mind, just, you know, being somewhere else. Um, so yeah, those are my two favorite. Amen. Oh, and the fun question is, what is your favorite memory as a kid? Oh, uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> it's funny. My sister had this like giant, like cardboard, like Barbie house where like you could like, you could like, you know, like actually go inside it. And it was just cardboard. And this is back, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm old. So, um, once me and my cousins, my sister kind of got sick of the Barbie house. So she was like, she gave it to me and my cousins to let us destroy it. <laughs> and we like went in the backyard and we had this giant swing set and we were like jumping off the swing set into this like cardboard, you know, Barbie house. And we built this like, like catapult that could like, launch things into the house and that, that was that was a lot of fun um that's probably my my favorite that might might have been a little tmi there but that's probably my favorite uh, uh one of my funnest 
childhood memories. Destroying things. Awesome. Right. Next question is from What Are You Doing? Hello. Your channel is refreshingly different from other Catholic channels. The only ones similar are the Thomistic Institute shorts explaining theology. Did you gravitate towards the style because you are a more visual learner? Do you ever feel uh, limited by the style of your videos to tackle a subject that isn't easy to visualize? Great question. Um, okay. Um, regarding the style, I, for me, I just wanted to come up with something that was simple, that got an idea across. Um, I wasn't interested in creating like beautiful, like detailed animation. Actually, when I started, I all I like all the, like I used that little stick figure character, or icon character. Um, I had like all these different colors and characters with, you know, faces and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, this is going to take me two years to make one video. So I had to sim simplify it down to something very simple. Um, and, and the point is, is I just say, I'm just trying to get an idea in somebody's head. Like I'm not trying to make some, some like beautifully crazy, like animation. Um, and, and I think it's funny cause that's, I think what has made it unique is the sense that I'm sort of just like, okay, like how, just with a few shapes and a little character and, you know, high contrast, black and like lots of like high contrast colors and things like that. Like. How can I get an idea to stick? And then regarding limitations and things like that. Yeah, I mean, often my thing, and I think this is kind of what I was getting at when I was talking about the prayer, is I sort of see things visually and ideas. I mean, we all do to an extent. But like, like even when I was in the seminary, we were studying this stuff. Like, again, as we were studying, I was just seeing it all like pictures, you know. Um, so that's my language. Um, and that's that's why I think, um, you know, even with prayer, like I gravitate more towards, you know, discursive, like meditative and contemplative type prayer where, you know, you're 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 sort of in, in your like in 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 it. But yeah, I um so that that's kind of the the story of the style, but a lot of times, yeah, I'm just like a lot of times I can show something better than I can say it, but then there's a lot of times where I want to say something, and I'm like, I have no idea how to show this. Like somebody asked that question about hope, and I'm like, how do you show hope in like animation and images? You know, um, so a lot of times it's 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 hard, and yes, there there's a limit there, and and I just put a black screen and I'll just, I'll just say it. But, um, but that's what I love about the creative process is it's all problem solving. Like, okay, how do I, how do I show this idea? You know? Well, uh, even if you say you struggled with it, it seems like your videos have pulled it out pretty well. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from golden angle. Hi, what is your best prayer experience? Um, you know, I think we've all had those times in our prayer where we're just like, maybe it's not quite ecstasy, but it's kind of, you know, like the saints when they talk about ecstasy and you're, you're sort of like, maybe that was kind of had a glimpse of that. And, and um, there's been times where, and it's all grace, it's, not you know it's just all comes from grace and and from god but like there have been a few times where yeah i've just felt like like i could feel the presence of like the king and i say the king because it's like when you're in the presence of a of a king like you just know it you just feel it and like this is a like a king like you know, like no other, the king of the universe, you know, and, and like, I've had little moments where I've just had, you know, had that grace and just been like, my gosh, I could, I could stay here forever. Like, I, I understand how the saints say that, like, I could stay here forever, you know? Um, and I, I yeah, I've had a, a, just very few, not, not, not many of just like that, where you can, it's like you feel the presence of, uh, it, yeah, just 
you know it, it almost feels like my the atoms on my from my body are going to just disintegrate you know um so i i think you know those little glimpses of those things um have like is what keep keeps you going you know amen so now we're at the 9 p.m mark there's about 20 questions left that i've counted do you want to keep going until we're finished these questions or do you want to go up to a certain number yeah let's keep let's keep going uh let's do a few more this is this is fun i i enjoy this excellent next question is from captain nemo why is your name i am beggar do you beg a lot? I do. Um, and I, I thought that question would come up. It means two, two things, and it's about a, a twofold sort of realization, I think, that we, we inevitably are going to come to in our faith journey. And the first one is, is yeah, we are beggars. You know, we, we are completely dependent it's like coming to this realization that I'm completely dependent on him for everything. Even the next word that comes out of my mouth, the next breath, the next instant of, of whatever this existence is, depends on him. Um, so it's like that uber like extreme dependence, um, of like, yeah, I, I, I don't bring much to the table here. Like I'm, I'm begging, you know, um, to him for, for everything. And just, again, just that dependence. Um, now that's the first part. The second part is that when we come to realize that it was actually Christ who kind of came down, he shed all his glory and came down here, put on like our humanity, like, the rags of our humanity, so to speak. And Christ is the beggar who, who came down to us to beg for our, our hearts, to beg for our souls. And so it's this twofold thing of like, yeah, I'm, I'm dependent on him and he's, and he's here begging for my heart, you know? And, and that's kind of where the idea came from. And that language, I actually stole it from Augustine. He used the language of the beggar a lot, how we're, we're beggars. And um, just that, I don't know, that gives, like, it gives me chills when I think that, like, of, of like, like, Christ just coming here, you know, um, and, and for, for us, you know. So it's like I'm the beggar and, and Christ is the beggar. And, 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 and it's this, I don't know, this, um, relationship that that comes from that but that that's sort of where the uh idea came from amen next question is from salok god bless brother given the creative approach you've taken up as your ministry do you recommend for others to try a, uh, taking a similar approach in their regions if they feel a call for it or do you believe that it may be best to support the existing active ministries found in one diocese especially if one does not feel a particular calling to start their own ministry? Well, it's up to, you know, the Spirit. And if the Spirit is is calling you to a ministry or a certain thing, then that needs to be explored and discerned and, and um, all that. Um, now, I believe very strongly that the Spirit is calling the lay people um, now like, I don't want to say more than ever, but like, just, you know, it's that whole thing, like where, where there's a lot of sin, grace abounds, you know, and I, I think grace is abounding right now and it's there for the taking. And I believe the Holy Spirit is calling, um, lots of us to ministry or vocation or whatever it is. And, you know, if that means kind of jumping support, being part of another ministry or starting your own or getting together or whatever. I don't know. That's, that's for the spirit to decide, but, but I do believe that, um, it's a special time now. And, um, um, and especially obviously for vocation and priestly ministry and religious life and all that. But I believe also, 
God's calling the, um, the, the lay people right now, very, very strongly, um, because he needs us everywhere, you know, he needs us everywhere. And, you know, our, our churches are, have so much to do and, you know, hands, their hands are full and, and we need, we need Catholics, good Catholics everywhere in, in, you know, in work and in ministry and in marriages and in, you know, in all these things. So, and I, I just believe 100% that, um, like there, the, the grace is, is really out there and it's really strong now. Um, I mean, it always is, but, um, so if you feel something called to something like discern it, get, get, get going. And, and because as, um, sister Faustina says, it's like it, it, you know, it, nothing pleases God more than, than when we answer that call, you know? Um, so yeah. And, and I think he's calling us all for something, you know, so, um, so answer the call. Amen. Someone in the live chat is asking, who is the guy in your profile picture for YouTube? Oh, um, it's actually a painting. One of my favorite painters, um, his name is Michael Sviertz and he's Dutch. He's kind of like from the Rembrandt world and the painting is called, well, it's got a few different names, but it's called the beggar. And, um, and I love all his paintings. He does portraits of like, you know, the farmers and the peasants and those those type of people. In, in that, uh, I don't know. I think he's like 16th or 17th century uh, Dutch. So yeah, it's the painting is called the Beggar. So um, that's that's who it is. Okay. The next question is from Mini Muse. Salutations, Randy, sir. Before I ask my question, I really want to thank you for your videos. They have been so helpful in helping introduce Jesus Christ to my family and secular friends who, like me, didn't understand the first thing about Christianity. You are a true blessing, and I pray for your protection and continued revelation with our Savior Jesus Christ. My questions are these. 1. How would you describe and handle spiritual warfare? 2. How does one make the decision of, of whose spiritual authority on earth we should trust in uh in order to teach and lead us properly. Thank you for your time. Okay. Um, first of all, th thank you for that. Um, those kind words. Um, all the glory is, is God's, but, um, but I appreciate it very much. So regarding spiritual warfare, I, I, that's a tough one. You know, um, I look for like three different things. Like even when I'm looking at myself about what kind of, is there some sort of spiritual battle going on here and it's the three d's of the devil i'm sure you know them but it's doubt and discouragement and division you know um so if there's like major doubts and if it like it's doubts that almost like you can't even reason sort of through them or out of them um that could be you know a, a sort of a sign of a sp spiritual thing um you know, division, if you feel divided from people or like, like there's a divisiveness even from prayer and from the sacraments and from going to mass and, and not just like, I don't feel like going to mass today, but like a real, like, sort of like, what's the word? Like, like a repulsion or, or almost like, like you can't be in there. Um, uh, that, that could be like a spiritual thing. Um, and then discouragement. And discouragement is, like I always say, like the devil likes us when we're down, and when we're down, he likes to step on our throats, you know. And he likes to get us. He likes to fuel our own discouragement. Like he, I think he, he loves to fuel our discouragement, especially about ourselves. Like, like this overthinking thing, you know, plague almost. I, I think, I think the devil is he's, he's fueling that. Um, he likes to get us in our heads and kind of in these downward spirals. And then we're not doing something else. And as long as we're not doing something else, like praying or going to mass or doing some good or whatever, then he's, he's fine. He's like, I got this one, you know? Um, so those are the things I look out for in spiritual warfare. Um, and then, um, 
what, what was I didn't understand the last one about spiritual authority. I don't. I'm not sure if I really understood that. Uh, that um, question. How does one make the decision of whose spiritual and authority on earth we should trust and in, uh, in to teach and lead us properly? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if that's a question about churches or things, but um, I, you know, obviously the I I, I put 100 percent my trust in the magisterium of, of the church and the Holy Spirit working through the church and, um, you know, and and her authority. Um, so I don't, I'm not sure if that's what the question was was getting at, but um, for context, but I, the person who asked the question is Protestant. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so yeah, I um, trust in that authority again. Going back to what I was saying before about you know the thing I love about the Catholic Church is that every single thing that like whatever it says, okay, this is what we believe or that's what we believe. Is it's not arbitrary. It's not. Um, it's like thousands of years of some incredible thought and thinkers have went into every single. Like when you read some of that stuff, like every single line was like fought over and argued over. And do we say it this way? Do we say it that way? And and like over years and years and years and 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 through through the you know. Um, uh, guidance of the spirit. Now, I, you know, I know what, what some people might say about that, but, um, um, about, okay, well, what about when the church was this way and church was that way? And yes, it, it went off, uh, s some of the, the vessels of the church, earthen vessels, so to speak, sort of went off in, in, in different ways, but there was always the, this, just the, the truth and, and, uh, of, of the spirit. And, and it's like, it's like the, the authority of the church comes from the Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, and I, 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 I'm, you know, I'm for myself and we all have to make that decision on our own, but I, um, for myself have found it to be true and, um, trust it 100%. Amen. Next question is from Father Baggins. Hello, and welcome to our little corner of the internet. I am the server chaplain uh, of the server, and I'm a parish priest in real life. I have two questions. One, what advice would you give to priests to more effectively reach out to late teens slash young adults, especially considering that many of our young people leave active practice of the faith? And two, who is your favorite character in Lord of the Rings, and why is it Gandalf? <laughs> well... Thank you, Father Baggins, and I appreciate that very much. Okay, so for the first question um, regarding how to reach young people, I don't want to steal, you know, Pope Francis's line, but the the whole like meeting them where they're at. Obviously, I know you know that, but I I, I guess I can only speak for myself and um, and in my you know ministry of. Um, even just doing this or even as a, as a seminarian. Um, and yeah, I, I just, I don't know, I guess. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Just meeting them as seeing them as, you know, it, it, individuals like seeing, seeing the, the person. Um, and I don't know, I just, I just remember, um, you know, I was part of a school, a high school and, you know, I was walking around with, my collar on as a seminarian, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I know, I don't know. I know I don't have to tell you this, but just, um, I just found, I, I just kind of became friends with them before anything else. And, um, and that seemed to, I don't know, break down a lot of walls, but again, this is, this is like very, like, again, I know, I know you know that. And then the second thing is, what I've always found is talking about mysticism and, you know, the saints and the, um, the, some of the stories of the saints of miracles and mysticism and demons and devils and angels and like, and, um, like that always gets the eyeballs open and, and it's like always a great conversation and, 
and you know with 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 like especially younger generation like there's also a kind of a no like their tolerance level for for certain types of for lack of a better word bs is is like very very low so i found like you know talking about something the eye like the eyeballs glaze over super fast and then you talk about this and it's like boom the eyeballs are wide open again um so um and and i found like mysticism and 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 then like mysticism and then like struggle like I remember once being in a in a classroom and like not connecting with anyone and then being like i asked just like and this was probably like an eighth grade class and just asking like well what's the biggest like struggle you, you have like with your with your parents right now and boom like all of a sudden it turned into this humongous like like uh sharing tearing session you know um so I don't know. I don't. I don't think I've told you anything um, that you don't already know. But um, um, but then for the second part of that, um, <laughs> I'm going to shock the world right now about the um, Lord of the Ring. I'll, I'll just go with your answer, Gandalf, before I say anything because I actually guess never... you haven't watched it. What's that? Let me I haven't, wa you haven't watched it. I haven't it. watched it and I never read it either. Um, so uh, I, I am not the uh, expert on that at all. Poor Father Baggins. This is the first time for him. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, uh, I think I cut you off when you were going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say I met Stephen Jackson, um, but uh, that was before the... Oh no! Actually, that was after the Lord of the Rings thing. Yeah. But anyway, go to the next one. Next question is from Cone. Hey, I am beggar. Question one: Is there a process on how you make your videos? If so, could you please explain? And two: uh, What is your favorite music slash band? Okay. Um, process. Yes. First, I <laughs> first I write down what I think is like the most brilliant idea, like in history. And I'm like, wow, this is like really good script and this is going to be an awesome video. And I see the whole thing and I'm like, pat myself on the back. And then I go to pray about it and God kind of just laughs and he's like, okay, now this is what we're really going to say. And like, I end up like basically starting from scratch all over again and like writing something 100% different than where I thought I was going to start from. And that usually goes back and forth a while while God is a humbling me and b like, oh, this is this is what we're gonna say here. Um, that's a lot of prayer. And then once I get somewhere, like I'm like, okay, here's an idea, here's some thoughts. I just start recording stuff and seeing what comes out. And I usually just like I'll have an idea, but I'll just as I'm recording, I'll just go for it. Like I'm not like reading a script, you know. Um, and then from there, like I was talking about before. I go to storyboards and I'm like, okay, like I can say, maybe I can show this better with animation. So I don't really need to say it. And then, and then vice versa. Like, I don't really know how to show this with animation. So now I can, um, um, just, you know, um, like just say it. And that goes back and forth quite a bit. And then it just like, I, like it just keeps whittling it down, whittling it down into, um, you know something and i'm i literally am going back and forth like to the to the launch day where i launch it that morning i probably re-recorded something and changed some images and like the one i'm working on now i mean man this one almost killed me but like i just keep like changing it and and it's funny because there's something that just never feels a little off. And, and I always say, okay, like that's the Holy spirit. And until like I, it feels right. I'll just keep recording it. And sometimes I'll record one line like 50 times. Um, and then eventually we, we get there, but it, it takes a while. Amen. Oh, and then his second question is, uh, do you have a favorite band slash music? Oh, uh, <laughs> Like I said, I'm I'm old, so um I like I listen to uh who do I 
favorite band right now. Mm. I don't know. Like I'm kind of a kind of like a classic rock eighties, eighties guy. So uh sometimes nineties, but um that's kinda that was that's kind of like where where music sort of where I left off in the music wor- world. And uh so I go back to that and um yeah, I, I don't know if I could even name someone right now, but um, that's that's my thing. Next question is from Yerda Ponti. What kind of Catholic spirituality fits for teenagers, and why? Uh, again, I I think mi- like the mystical sort of spirituality, and I also think I don't know if you guys know Father Spitzer. Um, he's awesome. You know, he's the, um, Magis center guy and he's kind of blind and he's on YouTube and, you know, he, he's like a physicist. He was like a NASA physicist and all that. And he's big into like science and quantum physics and, you know, all that stuff. And he, he uses that stuff to like disarm kind of, you know, any sort of atheistic, kind of pseudoscience sort of things. And, but he's really, he's, he's really good. And he's really, uh, and, and like that science thing, I think is, is really interesting, especially to, to younger people and that quantum physics stuff. And, and like, and then he gets into like the near death experiences and like the shroud of Turin and all that stuff. And, and really like get, but really gets into the science and, and I, I talked about one of those things once and, and I was kind of using his, you know, cause he, he does the research on these things. But he was saying like talking about the image on the shroud and he's like, only the only thing that science can say that could have created that image would have had to have been this radioactive, like explosion of like light that happened in like such a short amount of time to like leave an image of that, like of that, sort on that sort of material and he he talks about this like radioactive like high high energy thing almost like an atomic bomb and you're just you just like like it's just fascinating you know and it's and it's very faith like confirming you know um so that's not spiritual but like the science spirituality in terms of like mysticism and like um the saints and the um um like you just start talking about like a story about bilocation and um, or or um, a, a battle with a de- devil or a demon and that that is like confirmed or that was backed up and then um, I think that's like really attractive and then like in terms of um, just like actual spirituality like I think it's Fulton Sheen who used to say like if if you're <laughs> And he was talking about like high school kids, but he was saying like, instead of like going and teaching them religion classes and doing all this, like take them down to South America somewhere to like build a, a school or a, or a house or a church and get their hands dirty and, and then, and like do, do some really, some really good self-giving self-sacrificial work. And, you know, there's like all these Catholic farms that are popping up where it's, it's not about going to like a retreat to like, okay, listen to lectures all day. You're going there to work and like get dirty and like self-sacrifice. And and I think that um, is also very appealing to um, like a teenager and younger um, generation. Amen. Next question is from Superboard. Hello, I am Beggar. First question I have is how you would you debate with others about Catholicism while staying calm and understanding? My less serious question is what is your favorite candy bar? Carlson Chew. Oh no, no. Probably Three Musketeers. Um or Charleston Chew, frozen. I don't know. I may I don't even know if Charleston Chew exi- exists anymore. Um and then the other one about staying calm is again it comes down to a, a calm spirit a calm soul and um if your soul is 
simple and calm and in Christ and vice versa, then I don't know. I find the emotions kind of fall into their place, you know? Um, and, and I mean, we all get emotional still, but like, it's like when, when we have that inner peace, um, and trust and just knowing, um, then it's, uh, very, I, then I find it very easy to, um, to stay calm and to just, Hey, this is what I, how, this is just what I feel and how I believe what I believe. And it's, it's your choice to accept it or, or not, you know, uh, that, and that's it, you know, like, um, um, I don't feel any pressure of like, I, I have to convince you of this, you know, it's like, no, oh, it's, it's, it's your choice. You're very free. And it's one of the greatest gifts you were given. And, um, you know, and, and this is where I stand and this is, um, why I feel that way. And, um, but ultimately it's, it's, it's everybody's choice. Amen. Uh, so now we are at the two hour mark and there's about 12 questions left. Do you want to go through them and finish them or do you want to end it here? How about one more? All right. right. Okay. Let's go with Pants's question. Hello, sir. I'd like to know what your opinion is on having God play an active role in more grounded types of fiction, as opposed to fantasy like in The Lord of the Rings. I'm wondering if there's ways to do it that don't come off as corny, while still creating a good story with compelling conflict and character dynamics. For my fun question, do you know any party tricks? Okay, to your first question, yes. And like, I, I'm actually exploring that's kind of a, a new angle that I want to want to go. And, um, there's an old, there's these old films. Um, they're like way back, like seventies or something where, uh, this director, he, he kind of took the 10 commandments and he made these, like, he just made like a short sort of story about each one of them, you know, and they were all like very profound and very, it was, Fiction, but each one was based on one of the commandments and about these like people living in this like apartment complex. And, and it was like, like so good. And I would like to take that something like that, but then do it even in like, like even push the boundaries. Cause like I said, I used to work in video games. So I was always doing like sci-fi fantasy, like creating, like m my background was like, concept art you know so creating this art for these like really far out there worlds and all that and and even to like take it into that realm like a tolkien or something you know so yeah i i and you know that's something i even want to explore and and i do think that um again back to that thing about like god calling people you know and especially now like like there is a sort of movement in, and even like, you know, film and TV where people I think are, is a shift to like, no, like we want something with a little more substance and things like that. And, um, and we got all the substance in the world in our faith, you know? So like translating, um, like I always wanted to do a story of, you know, um, the story of, of Joseph and, not not Mary Joseph Joseph Old Testament Joseph uh, you know with his brothers and they they leave him for dead in 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 a ditch and and like I would I always wanted to do a story about that but like in a in a like more of a fantasy like um, sort of environment because that like that's like such an incredible story of like betrayal and forgiveness and love and like like all that stuff. Um, and I think that that would have an appeal of like, you know, bringing it to like bigger audiences and big, bigger, you know, uh, groups. So, um, you know, I, I, and I think God is, is calling like creators, writers, you know, uh, um, you know, everybody. And like, this is such a great thing, like this, this discord thing to like bring people together and like, get that stuff like really like you know getting some legs on some of those things so um so yeah i think i think that would be awesome oh and the other question um 
Uh, well, I forgot it. What was the other one? The fun question was, do you know any party tricks? I know a really good card trick that like always blows everyone away. But the <laughs> the problem with it is it takes like five minutes to do it. So people get bored halfway through it. But but the payoff is is worth it at the end. So that's my one that's my one trick that I, you know, bore everybody to death with, but works out in the end. All right. Uh, before I give the conclusion and allow you to uh, give a plug, uh, let's end with a concluding prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, I wish, you to, I wish to thank you for giving us the gift of being able to hear Randy here today. I pray that all who have heard this AMA are able to derive some benefit from it, and I ask that you bless all who worked hard to make it happen, especially Randy himself. I ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. All right, Amen. guys, thanks for coming to tonight's uh, AMA. I want to thank uh, Randy uh, for agreeing to doing this AMA, uh, and despite the technical difficulties, uh, being able to get through it and uh, answer most of the questions. I also want to thank uh, the mod team and uh, for making this happen, especially Regina for making the uh, the poster and Lace for helping us with the technical difficulties, uh, the background stuff and recording. Randy, if you want to give a plug, uh, now is the time. Yeah, I mean, first I just want to say thank you. Um, I uh, like it, this. This was awesome. Like I enjoyed. It was fun. You know. Um, Hope I didn't. I hope I didn't bore everybody to death. I. Um, it's funny because I'm used to to doing these, but usually on Zoom, and at least I can see faces. And then I'm like, okay, like it's. I don't know if something's connecting or not, but like, I just. Uh, I enjoyed. Um, um, you know, answering some questions and and having some fun. Just like, you know, it was, it was great. So I appreciate that. Um, regarding plugs yeah just just get get to uh i am beggar i'm on um you go to the website or youtube is even better um or tiktok or instagram i'm not really on too much anymore but instagram i mostly use for um um if you want to dm me and i'll get it there um but uh but yeah youtube tiktok i got a video uh dropping next week so new one it's been a while but i've been um you know i gotta like do other things to like pay the bills for i am beggar but um so video new video dropping next week so please check it out on youtube and also you know if if there's something in there where you're like hey this like makes sense or this is then then all I ask is you just send it around and that helps me a lot um, because it's just about getting more eyeballs and, um, and more, you know, just, just getting, getting the word, getting the word out there. That's, that's what this is all about. Um, so um, I appreciate it. I enjoy this very much and yeah, reach, reach out to me um, through any of those things. And um, um I uh, I appreciate your um, being here and and listening to me. Thanks for joining us. Amen. And thank you to the audience for uh, coming here and listening to us speak. Uh, as always, uh, yeah. So God bless everyone. Uh, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and a good day tomorrow. Uh, goodbye. God bless. God bless.